So I was at the Los Angeles Times, um, which was a great, great opportunity, great place. Uh, one of the few newspapers anymore that has a really big, dedicated science staff. So we had six full-time science writers and a, and a science editor. I was based uh, in Philadelphia, and I was working for the Philadelphia Inquirer, which is a local paper there. I was fortunate that they had a health section, so it's an eight-page insert in the Sunday newspaper. So I'd say all my stories, actually, were health-related. I was stationed at National Public Radio in D.C. this summer, which is the national headquarters for NPR. And I was working on the science desk. Primarily, I was writing web content for the health blog, Shots, and the food blog, The Salt. In addition to that, I also worked on producing a few radio stories and some short pieces for All Things Considered. My editor was great. She basically got me from day one doing what the normal full-time uh, staff writers do. And I got to cover everything this summer. I wrote about uh, health. I wrote about uh, space. I wrote about dinosaurs. I wrote about finding new species. I wrote about psychology. Um, pretty much anything that would you know, fit under the umbrella of science and health, I got to cover. They ran the gamut from writing about a new class of melanoma drugs, the fact that the former head of transplant surgery at one of the Philadelphia universities was newly elected the mayor of Rome. One of my favorite things that I worked on were the short pieces for All Things Considered, which I worked on with Joe Palka, who is a legend in the field of science radio. And um, it just happened one day that we were kind of sitting around chatting and we were just talking about science and how interesting it is and I told him that one of my favorite things to think about in my free time is what would happen if you dug a hole all the way through the center of the earth and jumped into it. And he said, this is fantastic, let's do a radio story about it. And so he spoke to our editor who works with All Things Considered and she said that there are all these short holes in the All Things Considered programming in the summer. And they're usually like a minute to a minute and a half and she was looking for content to fill them. So she asked us to write a series about holes. What happens when you drop a ball down a hole? So what do real scientists know about black holes? With the help of our mathematically trained intern, Anna Hench, I'm Joe Palka, NPR News. One of the lessons that I really learned this summer was you, everything you do in writing and in communicating has to be in service of what the main point is. Because people, the reason why people pick up a newspaper or a magazine or a radio is they want to, they want to be informed, they want to learn new information, and you, you have to make sure you get that point across. One thing I learned over the summer is that you really need to target uh, the craft of your article to the, aud the audience. Um, each different outlet has a specific niche readership and I think it's important to identify who that readership is and really structure um, your article towards them. For example, at the Philadelphia Inquirer, it's, it's a local paper, so that was a challenge that I had to face was I had these great ideas but my editor would always ask me, well, what's the local angle? Going into this fellowship, I was kind of nervous about what it would be like to interview real scientists about their work. Being Coming from the perspective of a graduate student, it can be really intimidating to speak to people who are in the head of their field and ask them about their research. If you don't quite understand it, you never want to you know, look like an idiot or feel like you're not asking the right questions. And I was really nervous about going into that. And I expressed this anxiety to my mentor, Joe Palka, and he said to me, are you a grad student or are you a journalist? And I said, oh. I guess I'm a journalist now. And he said, yeah, go into it with that attitude and you'll have much more fun. And I realized that when you're a journalist and you call up a scientist and you say, hello, this is Anna Hench with NPR, they respond completely differently. They, the length they will go to to contort themselves to give you a satisfying answer is really impressive. And it just, it was so much fun. And I felt like I got to really ask a lot of questions and get a lot of answers and develop a really kind of, um, entertaining rapport with these scientists, which was not, not like anything I've ever experienced as a grad student.